welcome to this exciting video on St. Francis of Assisi, Peace and the Sultan of Egypt. Just a little activity before we begin, go into YouTube and search trailer Sultan and the Saint. This will give you a good overview about what we're talking about. Go to it, pause this video, jump into another tab and search. So don't forget, we're going to concentrate on the, the, the syllabus dot points. So explain the contribution and analyze the impact. We're not after a biography, but rather those two key words, contribution and impact. During this video, take notes, look for and collect specific examples, quotes, but also explain your examples and your quotes and elaborate. So from John's Gospel, chapter 14, verse 27, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. St. Francis, before warning the Crusaders, if I tell them, they will consider me a fool. If I am silent, I cannot escape my conscience. So St. Francis of Assisi is meeting with the Sultan al Kamil during the Fifth Crusade in 1219. This encounter stands out as a symbol of interfaith dialogue a mutual respect during a period characterized by religious warfare and animosity. St. Francis went to Egypt primarily to tell his own Christian troops that they were wrong. Francis warned that the battle and the war itself would fail. So Francis's several attempts to visit the troops fighting in the Holy Land were rejected. What is remarkable is that Francis decided to cross enemy lines. The Muslim armies were given orders to execute any Christian on sight, and he sought an audience with the head of the Islamic Empire, the Sultan, Malik al Kamil, in September of 1219. The connection that Francis makes with the enemy in his lifetime might end up being his most powerful statement to the world about putting together the inner life with the outer. There was almost no official acknowledgement of Islamic culture in religion in Europe at that time. So St. Francis approached the Sultan not to convert him by force, but to engage in peaceful dialogue. St. Francis and the Sultan al Kamil showed mutual respect. The Sultan was impressed with Francis's courage and piety and listened attentively to him. This historic meeting has since served as an inspiration for interfaith dialogue between Christians and Muslims. The vast majority of voices in the Western Church at the time, the popes at their head, had been swept up in favour of the anti-Islamic crusade, which began in 1095. The popes repeatedly used promises of eternal life and offered indulgences and total forgiveness of sins for those who fought for these holy wars. Francis, as in Jesus, the turnaround of consciousness was complete. The enemy of the small self became the friend of the soul. So from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5, verse 44, love your enemies. And this was a radical form of spirituality. Love your enemies and do good to those who will hate you, as Jesus preached. The Sultan sent Francis away with protection and a gift, a horn that was the Islamic call to prayer. It is still preserved in Assisi today, which says that they had given and received mutual regard and respect. There is no precedent that we know of this kind of behavior in the medieval period. After Francis's death, the only other Franciscan who made such contact was Major Ken Raymond Lull in 1236 to 1315. He made at least seven trips to the Arab world and sought neutral vocabulary. So today, the order of friars minus the Franciscans obtained from the Sultan the site of the Senegal and the site to officiate, the right to officiate, at liturgies in the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. The Friars Minor, then, are the official guardians of the holy places by the desire at the request of the Universal Church. And from the prayer of St. Francis, the first part, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace or thy peace. 
However, this prayer of St. Francis in its present form cannot be traced back beyond 1912. Thus, the prayer itself, the prayer of St. Francis, is considered impact as it was inspired by Francis. And today, Mother Teresa more recently made the prayer of St. Francis part of the morning prayers of the Roman Catholic Religious Institute she started, she established the Missionaries of Charity. And also Archbishop Desmond Tutu, winner of the 1984 Nobel Peace Prize, declared that it was an integral part of his devotions, his prayer. A little activity for you. Go and research two examples of the following. Can you find how has Pope Francis sought peace? And also more in more recent times, how have the Franciscans developed peace? You need to find two specific examples and quotes. And for an extension activity, go and research and maybe read Father Richard Raw's book, Eager to Love, which some of this presentation has come from. I hope you've enjoyed this video. God bless. Bye-bye.